Hi guys, this is Tech Howdy. I welcome you to another video tutorial on creating an ASP.NET Core application with Angular 7. In the last video tutorial, we fixed the issue where we were not able to show error messages in our model pop-up when the user tries to register in our application. So now every time a new user when tries to register in our application, if there are any errors related to the registration process, the user would be able to see those errors inside the model pop-up and every time the user fixes one of the errors for example if there is a there are two errors displayed one with username and email both already taken and then the user changes the username but the email is not changed then only one error will be displayed so depending on what errors the server sends us the errors will be displayed in the model pop-up now in this video tutorial we are going to learn a very important part of this application which is how we can send confirmation emails to users after they have registered in the application so the user has successfully registered in the application once the user successfully registers we will send them a email asking them to confirm their registration and that email will contain a confirmation link when that confirmation link is clicked the user will be redirected to a email confirmation page and then they can log into the application if they try to log into the application after registration without confirming the email an error will be shown in the alert box above the login form so let's go ahead and implement this code or logic inside the application and we will be using SendGrid email server to send the emails. Since we need an SMTP server to send emails to our clients or to our user, we will use SendGrid. SendGrid is a popular SMTP server that's available and we can register for free on SendGrid. So all you need to do is go to SendGrid.com and just click on the link that says start for free and register your account with SendGrid. Fill out the information that is needed to register the account and once you have registered the account you will be sent a confirmation link that requires to be confirmed and then you can log into your app account that's your my account page and you can see the available features that's provided by SendGrid. After you have confirmed your email you should be able to log into this account here in SendGrid and you will see a dashboard like this and this is a trial account so if you are using a free SendGrid account you can send up to 100 emails per day for testing purposes and there's also a limit on how many emails you can send in total in a month you can always go and click on the option to upgrade your account and you can upgrade the account in case if you want to use the paid service but if you're building an app only for testing purposes and to add it to your profile I recommend you to use the free version that should be enough at the moment since we all we want to do is use this SMTP server to send emails to our clients now the next thing that we want to do when we are inside the SendGrid dashboard is to we would need to now create a API key so anytime we want to send the email to our client using SendGrid server SendGrid server will verify if we have provided a valid API key to use the service provided by SendGrid. And to create an API key, we need to go to settings and then in the options, we will find API keys. Click on that. I have created some sample keys. I have already created a confirm confirmation email key to test in the application. But I will show you the process how you can create one go to create API and then here for the API key name you can give your key a name let's say I'll call this key as ng core key underscore or just leave it as ng core key and then what I want to do is leave this option as full access for now so I can use these services but depending on your needs you can also restrict access but for now for this project we will just leave it as full access and then create 
and view click on the option create and view now we have successfully created an api key as sendgrid suggests that we save this key somewhere so since it cannot show this to us again so let's save this copied and then done now you can save this key on some notepad or on some word document and save that document so i'll just copy this key here from sendgrid and i'll save it on a word document and now I have my ng core key that I can use in my application. This is my API key. If you want to anytime edit anything in your API key, you can click on edit API key, change the name and so on, and then click update or change the access permission. Now let's go back to our application inside the Visual Studio. Now the next thing that we want to do is for now let's minimize or close the client app and now start working on the root application which is the ASP.NET Core application which will contain the logic for sending these emails to our clients. So the first thing that we want to go ahead and open is the appsetting.json file. The appsetting.json file, as mentioned when we created this file, contains all the secret keys and the API keys related to our application or to other applications that we are going to use. Since we are going to use SendGrid, we will add the SendGrid API key here instead of directly adding it to the startup.cs file and we will add it in the app settings and then we will Use, a, use our helper class to access these keys and I will show you this in step-by-step -step process so first thing is the API key that was generated by SendGrid you need to add that here as along with your username for SendGrid so whatever is your username you can go to settings uh, account details and you can check your username and then all you want to do is you need to create two keys over here. First one is SendGrid user. You can name these values anything that you like. I'm naming them as SendGrid user and SendGrid key. Now I'll add the values that are needed inside a string so I'll add my API key over here which I copy pasted on my word document and I'll add my username here so that should be it for our app settings.json file don't worry I will change this API key later so please when you download the source code use your own API key because if you're going to use my API key it wouldn't work because I'm going to delete it after uploading the video tutorial so you would have to use your own API keys here along with your own username so we can close this file now the next thing that we want to do is go ahead and inside our since we are going to create or set up our email sending service let's go ahead and add a new folder in our application and call this as email so all our email related classes or email related services we will add them here interfaces that we require we will add them inside this folder so whenever we want to debug our application or, or debug any services or classes related to email we know it's going to be inside this email folder rather than putting them all around this application right click on this create a new file and let's call this file as send email details
this should be a class so make sure you select an empty class I've named this class as send email details and this class will contain all the properties related to sending an email so let's click new so what are the properties that we require when we send an email we require a from name who's sending the email we require a from email the email of the person who's sending the email then we require the to name to whom we are sending the email and the person's email to whom we are sending this email message then we require a property for subject a property for the content that is the body of the email and finally we require another property which is a boolean property which is to verify if the email has some html content in it inside sendgrid you have the options to create your own email templates and you can go ahead and select bunch of templates so you can also insert html content inside your email body therefore you can we are going to use this property to verify if the content is html or no but in this project i'm not going to create a specific template to send emails so you can create your own templates by researching on sendgrid how you create it i'm just going to send a basic message confirmation message inside the email body so let's go ahead and add all these required properties inside our send email details class so first let's get rid of this constructor we don't need this constructor and then let's add our properties so i have added these properties which are of type string and the is html property which is of type boolean so go ahead and create all these required properties and once you are done we will start working on our send email response class so the next thing that we want to do is go ahead and create a new file let's call this class as send email response since we will use this class to send the response to our client the response can be a successful response the message was sent successfully or the response can be an error where something didn't work the server didn't work and there was an error so we will use this class to handle the error or to handle the success related properties so we'll call it send email response once again choose the empty class click new and we don't need the constructor so you can delete it and we will go ahead and create two properties inside this send email response class so i have created a successful property and an error message property so if the error message is equal to null which means that the response was successful and if there is an error message the error message to be displayed is a string so we can get or set it so just two properties needed here we can save this now go ahead and close this class now we have our send email details class ready as well so with all the properties now the next thing that we want to do is go ahead and create a folder called as services now this service folder will contain all the services related to our application that's our asp.net core application we also have a service folder inside our client application that handles all these services communicating with the APIs. Similarly, we will create a folder here called as services in our ASP.NET Core application. So let's go ahead and do that. So services. now inside this services class or services folder we will create our send grid email sender service and we will create our auth message sender options as well now first let's go ahead and create a new file call this auth message sender options it's an empty class i'm going to click new so we can go ahead and get rid of this constructor now this class will hold the properties 
related to our app settings.json file. So we need a class to go and get the values, these two values from our app settings.json file since we don't want the application to directly access this. So to do that, we have created a helper class which is auth message sender options. We had created a similar kind of class to access our JWT options. Now we are going to create this auth message sender option class to access our SendGrid email related properties like the SendGrid user and the SendGrid key. So now inside this, since we are going to access the SendGrid user and the SendGrid key, let's create two properties. Now let's go ahead and add the two properties. So once again, we will use this class to fetch the secure email key and send the confirmation email so that we can send the confirmation email to the user using the SendGrid SMTP server. So let's go ahead and create another class. And this class will be called, this is the main class, which is email sender service class, which will help us to send the email, which will contain all the logic that we need to send the emails to our users. So let's call this send grid email sender. And then you can just hit new. Uh, if you go back to your SendGrid page and if you go to your username and if you click on the setup guide, you should see this page where you can click on the first option which is integrating using our web API or SMTP relay. So just click on start, click on the web API and here inside the web API you have bunch of programming language in which you can integrate SMTP, SendGrid SMTP server or their services using the API key. Now, which programming language that we are concerned is C Sharp. So let's go ahead and choose C Sharp. And here SendGrid provides the documentation that is needed to install SendGrid in your ASP.NET Core application, which is written using C Sharp. So here is the code and in the next video tutorial i will show you the step by step process how you can use this code how you can set up this code inside this sendgrid email sender class inside your services and how we can use it then inside the registration method or in the account controller class to send confirmation emails to our users please like and subscribe my channel tech howdy if you have any questions you can use the comment section and once again thank you and like my video and subscribe my channel